Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, Lagrange Point 2's best kept secret. And this is episode 26 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. It's been a while since I recorded one of these. This is It's been literally a month since I last recorded an episode. Uh, due to uh, the agonies. The, the agonies and the miseries um, that have made me extremely unwell. So... Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, although, obviously, if you're watching this in the future, you won't notice the gap. Regardless, here I am, here we go. I think when we left off, I was about to rummage relentlessly in what I assume is Aikiko's private room. Oh, it's not, it's a server room. Where does she, where does she sleep? Prisoner transfer records. Some records about prisoner transfers that stand out. Aikiko removed two prisoners that are unaccounted for a day before the murder. Why? Encrypted file. An encrypted file in a suspicious looking folder that is outside the main Marshall files. Starlight can crack the security on it. Starlight got me into the Marshall servers. If Aikiko finds out, I'm not sure how long my head will stay on my shoulders. These are prisoner transfer records, as well as the desolation cell, there's a prison within these barracks for the non-demon possessed prisoners. Looks like Aikiko removed two prisoners two days ago. And there's no record of them being brought back to the prison. Well, looks like we found, uh... I wonder why Aikiko would have removed prisoners, says Lady Love Dies, as I sit here thinking, well, looks like we've discovered who the dead, uh, false marshals outside the, the place where all the marshals died. Well, the two marshals. The council died. Were. This file is encrypted and outside the normal folder structure. It's a photo of a strangled woman. My job is a never-ending joy. The metadata says that this came from a folder called Grace Bloodlines Examination. I'll hang on to this. Grace Bloodlines? Wasn't that... Wasn't that, uh, what's his name? Henry Division's mother? Ah, okay, so Grace Bloodlines was responsible for conducting and overseeing the exorcising of demons that possess island inhabitants and was murdered by Henry Division. Okay. So I guess that's the other person Henry murdered? Supposedly. Supposedly he killed his mother and I guess someone else also. Interesting. I wonder if that's related to the secret demon lab where they were doing secret demon research right next to Henry's house. Maybe they were just actively experimenting on him, or maybe they were, uh... You know, maybe they released something that got out. And did terrible things. So, at this point, there's a few places left that I haven't super explored. Um... And I think I want to go check some of those out before I go do anything else. I think I want to take a look up in the temple, and then I think... Oh, oh, Christ. Yeah. You know, it's really dangerous to, to have an open, like, port on top of the... on top of a large building. Like, who did this? Who allowed this to happen? You know, what kind of terrible person would simply go up to an, uh, a roof a roof hatch and open it and leave it open for anyone to wander into? I'm sure whoever it was is very sorry for what they did. But yeah, so I'm going to try and make my way up to one of, I think, two remaining places I haven't thoroughly explored. Or at least two of the obvious places. There may be other hidden locations of which I do not yet know. I think I need to get a new Xbox controller again. This one's all busted. Let's see. So, up there, there's something going on. Don't know what it is, but we'll have a look. Uh, I don't mean atop this building. I mean in the background up there on that sort of promontory. And the other is up at the temple, which is where I'm going to go now. That air dash really makes getting around a lot easier. So, I don't really know what I'm hoping to find at the temple at this point. I'm going there because I haven't been there yet, or at least not properly. But I've been thinking a little bit about the evidence that we have going on, and to be honest, 
Um, whether or not I've found other crimes that people may be implicated for is kind of irrelevant to what we're actually here to do, which is to solve the crime to end all crimes. And um, it's super looking bad for Aikiko and Doom Jazz. Nobody else is really even involved. If we take a quick look, there's tons of evidence pointing towards Aikiko either having been heavily involved or literally having done the crime herself. There's nothing tying Carmelina to that crime, although there may be something tying Carmelina to uh, the 10 years ago Henry's possession crime. Crimson Acid, literally the only piece of evidence against her is completely circumstantial, she has no alibi. Doom Jazz, no direct evidence, but his, he's lied about his alibi and also he's got a close connection to Aikiko. Henry, there's a lot of evidence that he didn't do it, or that if he did, he was being used as a weapon against his will, or without his consent at any rate. Lydia and Sam, again, no connection to this crime at all. A connection to an unsolved minor other offence, something to do with distilling blood, but nothing to do with the crime to end all crimes. Witness, again, nothing to do with anything that's going on. The only suspicious thing is that he and Carmelina spent the night together, basically, and therefore they are each other's alibi. That's not exactly reliable. And Yuri. Yuri was unavailable at the time of the murder. He has an alibi for the rest of the night, but not specifically the murder time. And again, no other no other non-circumstantial evidence. Everyone on the everyone on the entire island had a motive, so having a motive is not evidence in and of itself. So for all that I want to believe it was some kind of like colossal failure cascade, or possibly some kind of a direct plot involving everybody. Um, it's looking more and more like Aikiko is the one behind it all. Which, of course, does potentially mean that she's just been very, very, very well framed by someone. But by whom? And why? Well, I suppose the, the why is obvious. You would, you would frame someone else for the crime you did so that you don't get caught for the crime you did. That's, that's kind of how that works. Alright, let's actually have a look in here. Oh wait, did I? Yeah, I've unlocked that. Actually, I do want to look around the corner first. I have this compulsive need to rummage in, in every location, to stick my nose in every hole where it's not wanted. Um, but it doesn't look like there actually is anything back here. Not even a secret Shinji, which is disappointing. Anyway, in just a moment... Wait a second. This isn't where I found Kayhax's body dragged off the cliff, is it? What's this? Vehicle marks? Tire tracks. This cliff overlooks the obelisks and the nightmare computer. Lydia's the only one on the island with a car. Looks like this is where the remote access to the obelisk terminal was from. A nice clear line of sight. Looks like Lydia found a spot up here two days ago and accessed the nightmare computer that holds the secret to the second holy seal. Maybe the crime last night was set up in advance. Okay, well now there is a direct evidence connecting Lydia to the crime. Lydia, Lydia, Lydia. I expected better. I love how much of this investigation is reliant on me happening to wander around and run into stuff. What's going to happen to anyone you find guilty in the trials? The penalty will be death. The Syndicate takes a grave view on the mass murder of the Council. Know what I think? People masquerade ex execution as justice. The death penalty is bloodlust, pure and simple. Uh, I mean, I think it's actually a really complicated issue. I am strongly against the death penalty under all circumstances, to be clear. But I also think that you, I don't think it's simply bloodlust. I don't think it's simply a punitive desire to see people punished. I think it's more of a, you know, the people who have the monopoly on violence like to maintain that monopoly on violence. Killing people that they disagree with is a good way to do that. It's also a tool of class oppression. What? The people who are generally sentenced to death are of a lower societal class. It helps the elite keep them in their place. It keeps the fear pumping through them. I mean, yes, but again, it's complicated. Everything in the entire world is a is an awkward nexus of many different factors, all of which are operating on them at once. That's my opinion. 
I don't think anything can be really boiled down to something that simple. You can't rehabilitate the dead. The idle lands help re rehabilitate you. I'm here working for the Syndicate, aren't I? I'm not sure doing anything to get out of exile is the same as rehabilitation. Peace. Okay, yeah, but the exile in... The exile wasn't supposed to rehabilitate me. It was a purely punitive measure. It's the, to punish me for doing bad things. There's a sketch of something in the dirt. It's been scrubbed out in a hurry. This overlooks the obelisks and nightmare computer. Did Lydia do this? Her tire tracks are up here. Was this a sketch of what the obelisks reveal? Curiouser and curiouser. That is pretty interesting. Okay. So we've now got direct evidence tying Lydia into the crime because she was involved in breaching the second holy seal. That doesn't necessarily mean she was involved in the crime itself per se. She may have uh, she may have broken that seal for her own purposes and then once the information was out there that information could have been attained without her knowledge or by accident by anyone by anyone actually involved in what happened. But that's motivated reasoning if you don't want uh, Lydia to turn out to be responsible. I mean, there's the question of whether or not it was immoral to just slaughter these guys in the first place. You know, if someone has the right to slaughter you at any time for any reason, uh, is it bad for you to preemptively slaughter them so that they can't do that to you? Food for thought here in this uh, world that exists solely as allegory for reality, I suppose. Anyway, time to have a look inside this incredibly gaudy masterpiece. That's a lot of gold, baby. Uh, you can just tell that the, the architect for this place must have been Antonio Gordi. Haha, <laughs> that's, a, that's a pun if you know architects. Although it's not a very good pun because this place doesn't look like Gaudi's style in any way, shape or form. Gross. Moonlight Petal. Expert terraformer and architect. Built the eternal labyrinth in a dead star. Killed during the Great Betrayal in her endless city in Siberia. Her corpse is currently buried deep within the Russian catacombs. Good for her, I guess. So, I guess... I wonder what happens to the bodies. The citizen slaughter ritual happens and they slaughter all the citizens. And... I guess fill hot tubs with their blood, which makes sense, I guess. It's, it's, the, it's the violence of their death that's supposed to contribute the psychic energy, so I'm not sure why we need to play with blood. Vile Embrace. The horrifying twins. Journeyed across the stars to find new races to dissect. A carnal god whose worshippers engage in extreme sex. Sounds like my kind of party. Oh, they must be running a bit low on blood at this point. Beautiful Spectre. Master of the Astral Hunt. The Unending Skeleton. Scourge of the Calibur Solar System. I think, if I remember correctly, Calibur was a legendary sword. Um, in, I want to say Celtic? Celtic mythology? I think it might actually be one of the like things that we know now in the modern day as, as Excalibur. From, from uh, Welsh legend. Destroyed Eden, a huge centaur god that roams space. He made a crown of asteroids and filled their caves with harems of fanged men he encountered on a dying planet. Once again, sounds like my kind of party. Is there anything other than temple? Temple accoutrement and various shrines? Time worn blood bowl. A bowl used to collect blood during the slaughter ritual. After filling the bowl, a reveler is allowed to take no more than one sip before passing it on. Who's the revelers? Is that the citizens? Relic 
Shadow Zero, a capricious god that caused destruction on every planet she touched. Tentacle armed goat. Sounds like my kind of party goer. Let's see, are there any of these I missed? Probably. It is a lot easier to see from up here. I mean, obviously blood has a symbolic power uh, in a lot of circumstances. It's one of the old magics. It's always had symbolic power for pretty much all of human history. However, I don't know... It doesn't... I feel like this is something that the writers have picked to be kind of like a big culty shocking thing rather than it actually making symbolic sense. Uh, I mean, obviously the blood is symbolic of the deaths caused, right? The blood is symbolic of the blood shed to kill the person whose blood it, blood it is. But I mean, they've also literally said that the actual mechanic happening here is that the the psychic energy of killing them is directed and fed directly to the gods. Does that mean that the ritual is for the benefit of the humans using the ritual? Or, I mean, the ritualistic elements of the slaughter? I guess maybe it makes them feel less bad if they know they're doing a ritual rather than, say, just lining them all up and shooting them in the head. Faulty worship stamp. When a citizen completes their allotted worship quota in a day, their report card is stamped. It is also stamped for overworship. Interesting. So it sounds like overworship isn't a bad thing then. Maybe it's more like overtime. This busted ass controller is driving me insane. Oh look, there's a pulpit. So I guess I guess the the officiant of the ceremony reads these tablets from up here. That's neat. That's a pretty cool little detail. I will I will give it that. For all that I think that a lot of the elements of the environments and kind of ideas in this game are a bit slipshod. They're a bit kind of stuff jammed together rather than stuff put together in a way that like blends properly. Uh, for all for all that, I do think there are a lot of neat little things, a lot of nice little environmental details. Someone thought about this space, is what I'm saying. There's an awful lot of random crap scattered around the island, isn't there? They're vignettes of lives once lived. That's a poetic way of saying trash. You're just scooping it all up, are you? The answers to mysteries are everywhere. I'm sorry, I'm keeping you from your hobby of collecting garbage. Don't let me interrupt. Uh, well, we've established that um, Shinji conversations are kind of Socratic dialogues between the author and the player. Uh, for all that I don't think the authors are good enough writers to pull that off at any rate. But this is a puzzle. Um, but... That one seems fairly clear, you know. It's saying, why are you bothering to pick up all this stuff that we left here for you to pick up? It's, it's kind of like a more tedious variant on the incredibly tedious uh, thing that a lot of mainstream games writers like to do when they think they're being clever. Oh, I see what this is. Uh, so I'll rotate the bridges so that I can get across here. But I can probably just... See, I didn't need to rotate the bridges at all, I'm a, because I'm a genius. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so there is this incredibly tedious thing where, you know, a game that is fundamentally about violence will have a character, you know, you ha the player will be forced by the narrative to commit some kind of egregious violence, and then the game will go, ah, why did you do that? See, you're a bad person because you did the thing. While also not engaging with the fact that the only thing the, that the narrative allows you to do at that point is do the terrible thing. It's a completely pointless criticism. Um, it's just a smug little empty gotcha, because the only alternative is to stop playing the game. R rarely this is done a bit better by games that actually include options that weren't obvious to you, that you can actually engage. Um, but more often than not, it's just a really, a really cheap and overdone mechanic. Or mechanism, rather. Ah, I see, so I do have to 
solve the puzzle. Oh boy, is it going to do that every time? Oh, this one's going to be tedious. Oh, let's, uh, we'll be back in a second. Uh, well, I did that accidentally while I was <laughs> trying. I was trying to solve that puzzle and I was experimenting to see what happens and I accidentally happened upon the correct, uh, the correct inputs on, like, my, like, third input, which is just really funny to me. So now that I can cross, can I get in or is it still locked? Oh, interesting. Let's have a look in the sepulchre. Let's have a, a rummage around in the back room. Let's go inside the vestry and start critiquing the priest's wardrobe. Uh, I can't think of any more uh, secret back rooms of temples. Otherwise I would keep this chain of, chain of jokery going. Looks like it just leads outside. Ooh. <gasps> this is pretty cool. Oh, this is the graveyard. Okay, I wanted to get into the graveyard for some reason. I thought that maybe some corpses would have been stolen for the purpose of uh, dressing up as as the marshals killed outside of the syndicate hall, but that is not the case. Interesting, interesting, interesting. What is that? Interesting's number 57, 58, and 59. Well, is there a save point around here? I don't hear one. Okay, in that case, I think that's going to be all from me for today. Join me next time when hopefully I won't have a broken controller and I will pop open all these various graves and see what lies within. What kind of uh, succulent corpse meats we can uncover. And probably also talk to Shinji. So, that's going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.